dear viewers in this lesson we are going to see about the types of network internet is defined as the network of networks an excellent example of a network is the internet which connects millions of people all over the world the world wide web is one of the significant applications of the internet and networks by the end of this lesson you will learn about what a network is types of network internet service provider world wide web and intranet and extranet now let us see what a network is a network is defined as a collection of computers servers printers peripherals or other devices connected to one another which favor the sharing of data the devices in a network are connected together so that they can communicate with each other in terms of purpose networks are used for everything from sending files to a printer to accessing the internet let us discuss about the types of network the ways in which different networks can be classified are their size capabilities and the geographical distance they cover different types of networks provide different services and require different components to function properly one of the ways to classify the different types of network designs is by their scope or scale the scale of a network can be expressed by a geographic area they occupy and the number of computers that connects the internet networks can cover from a handful of devices within a single room to millions of devices spread wide across the entire globe due to the history of networks the networking industry refers to most type of design as some kind of area network some of the common types of network are encountered in detail below primary types of network lan and wan are the primary types of network which forms the basis for other networks let us see about local area network which we call as lan lan this is one of the simplest categories of network Local area network is used to connect network devices over a relatively short distance. LAN networks are used to connect computers together over relatively small distances such as within a single building or within a small group of buildings. LAN is typically used for sharing resources such as data storage and printers lans can be built with relatively economical hardware such as hubs network adapters and ethernet cables the smallest lan might use only two computers while a larger lan can accommodate thousands of computers they also tend to use some connectivity technologies primarily ethernet and token ring a lan relies mostly on wired connections for increased speed and security but wireless connections can also be used high speed and relatively low cost are the significant characteristics of lan in addition to operating in a limited space lan or owned controlled and managed by a single person or organization lans are mainly used for single sites where people are in need to share resources among themselves but not with the rest of the world for illustration think of an office building where everyone should be able to access files on a central server or print a document to one or more central printers such task should be made easy for everyone 
working in the same office but someone just walking outside must not be able to send a document to the printer from their mobile phone. Home to have LAN network especially if there is more than one device in the home. Mostly they do not contain more than one subnet if any usually controlled by a single administrator. They need not be connected to the internet to work although they can be. Now let us see about wide area network which is called as WAN. This is one of the categories of network slightly more complex in nature. As the term implies a WAN spans a large physical connecting computers together remotely connecting them over one huge network and allowing them to communicate even when far apart. The internet is the largest WAN spanning the earth and connects computers all around the world together. A WAN is a geographically distributed collection of LANs. A WAN can have multiple smaller networks such as LANs or MANs. A network device called a router connects LANs to a WAN to transfer data and information quickly and securely. It uses technologies like frame relay and X.25 for connectivity over long distances. Vans are typically too large to be controlled by a single administrator and so usually have collective ownership or in the case of the internet publicly owned. Now let us see about how LAN and WAN connect. LANs especially within a private home have a modem in the residence which is connected to an internet service provider. The internet service provider assigns an IP address to the modem which is a unique number that is sent to all devices capable of connecting to the internet including computers phones within the home. Though all devices in LAN can communicate with each other without using the internet, they can connect to the internet and send information over the WAN if a device needs to communicate with another which is on another LAN. This is done using a router which receives data from devices and routes it down the destination via a quickest virtual path going through a number of gateways on the way. First through a central gateway that divides the LAN from the WAN and then others which send the data from one to the next until it arrives at the final destination. All this happens at a rapid speed over modern broadband modems due to efficient and effective protocols being established to control and manage data. The other types of network can be discussed as follows. They are simply developed from LAN and WAN networks to have slight difference and adapt to different user needs. These include the following networks. Personal area network which is called as PAN. A personal area network or PAN is a computer network systematized around an individual person within a single building. It can be inside a small office or residence. A typical PAN includes one or more computers, telephones, peripheral devices, video game consoles and other personal entertainment devices. Suppose multiple individuals use the same network within a residence, the network is referred to as a home area network or HAN. The network is managed from a single computer but can be accessed from any device. 
fan provides great flexibility. It allows to send a document to the printer in the office upstairs while you are sitting on the ground floor with a laptop. It allows to upload a photo from mobile phone to desktop computer. It allows to watch movies from an online streaming service to TV. If all these sound familiar to you, you likely have a pan in your home without having called it by its name. Now let us see about Metropolitan Area Network which is called as MAN MAN. MAN is a network which is larger than a land but smaller than a van incorporating elements of both. It is typically owned and operated by a single unit such as a government body or large corporation. Campus Area Network Campus Area Network is larger than a LAN but smaller than MAN. It is used in areas such as a university, large school or small business spread over a collection of buildings which are reasonably local to each other. It might have an internal Ethernet connection as well as capability of connecting to the internet. Now let us see about the wireless local area network which is called as WLAN. If a local area network is entirely wireless, it is referred to as a wireless local area network or WLAN. It works using wireless network technology such as Wi-Fi and is used more in the home and by small businesses. The devices need not rely on physical cables and wires as much and can organize their spaces more effectively. Let us discuss about system area network. It connects computers together on an especially high speed connection in a configuration namely a cluster. The computers are connected together so as to work as a single system can be done as a result of very high speed computers and new low cost microprocessors. They are usually used to improve performance and is cost effective. Now let us discuss about the storage area network. This category of network connects servers directly to devices which store amounts of data without relying on a LAN or WAN network to do so. This involves a type of connection known as fiber channel, a technology which is similar to the Ethernet which handles high performance disk storage for applications on the number of professional networks. Let us see about the internet service providers which are also called as ISP. An internet service provider is a term which refers to the company that provides customers with an internet access. An internet service provider is also known as an internet access provider that is IAP. ISP makes the internet a possibility. In other words, a computer with a built-in modem and a router for networking without a subscription for an ISB won't have a connection to the internet. Generally, ISPs provide their customers with the ability to communicate with one another by providing internet email accounts. The servers are unique to each ISP. An ISP is typically the gateway to the internet and everything else you can do online. Internet connection is activated and set up through ISP enabling to send emails, go shopping, do research and more. The ISP is nothing but the link or conduit between the computer and all the other servers on the internet. We may feel like talking to the concerned person 
directly through email but in reality it's indirectly. Email goes from your computer to the ISP servers where it's sent along to its destination through other servers on the network. Every home or organization with internet access has an ISP mandatorily but all don't have the same provider to communicate with each other as well as need not pay anything extra to communicate with someone who has a different ISP. Data is transmitted using several technologies including dial-up, DSL, cable modem, wireless or dedicated high-speed interconnects. ISP employs hundreds of technicians, maintains miles of cabling and network services for its enormous subscribers. Now let us see about the types of ISPs. The different types of ISPs are Cable Internet Service. Cable Internet Service remains a popular option for getting online across the country offered by the local cable company in the user's neighborhood. This type of service is available by connecting a cable router to the computer and connecting to a designated jack. These ISPs are usually faster, especially in areas where there is not much usage. Access speed is dependent on the amount of traffic from other neighborhood users. Let us discuss about the dial-up. The dial-up connection requires the user to have a modem for internet access. The user dials a phone connection using a telephone number connects to a remote server and uses the telephone connection to browse websites. Though this type of access is slow, still a necessity for a small rural areas. DSL Internet Service DSL refers to Digital Subscriber Line, which is another widely available form of Internet Service. DSL is provided by the local phone company and the line is in shared between users. DSL is a technology that makes use of extra signals not used by telephone signals and a DSL router that connects to telephone cable to a telephone jack. These extra signals make DSL usage available even during times when the phone is ringing. Fiber Internet Service Fiber internet service is transmitted over fiber optic lines. It is the trending bandwidth champion capable of download speed in the 1 Gbps range. Major cities are highly expecting Google to pick their locale as the next site for its popular Google fiber service offering 1 gig of bandwidth at the same price as most cable or DSL plans. At the contrast, the high cost of installing fiber optic cables continues to slow the wider availability of fiber internet service. The next service is wireless internet service. Wireless internet service that is Wi-Fi is the widely available form of internet service as well as more convenient ISP service. It is offered free of charge by many hotels and malls. Wi-Fi is also installed in the home for people who have desktops and laptops networked. It rivals the speed of cable or DSL sometimes reaching 10 to 20 Mbps but the monthly data limits usually from 1 to 10 GB per month. This issue keeps the internet activities like streaming videos or online gaming to a minimum least expensive overage charges come into play. The next service is the satellite internet service. In the rural hinterlands where people are not able to receive DSL or cable service, satellite internet service is the only option. 
It provides a way to get online but with significant limitations like peak hard data limits and very quick download speeds but upload speeds are used through a modem which is very slow. Satellite service is the last resort for keeping in touch with friends and family over email. Now let us see about the World Wide Web. World Wide Web that is www is the collection of public websites connected to the internet worldwide together with the client devices such as computers and cell phones that access its content. To discuss about the origin of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee led the development of the WWW in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Berners-Lee called his system of hyperlinked HTML documents the World Wide Web. It was he who helped to build prototypes of the core web technologies and coined out the term WWW. Programmers then realized that a system of pages connected by hypertext links could provide many new internet users with an easy way to access information on the internet. WWW continued to be a key usage of the internet today after its popularity in mid 1990s. Now let us see about the role of WWW in e-commerce technologies. The web has introduced a much broader range of audience to the net. Moreover, it permits anyone to have a 24 hour a day presence on the internet. The web warrants serious attention by business practitioners. Each organization has different advertising and marketing objectives for establishing and maintaining a web presence. WWW is remarkable to create new opportunity for advertisers and marketers to facilitate communication with new and existing markets in a very integrated way. No communication medium or electronic technology till then has ever grown as quickly as WWW. Now let us discuss about the core web technologies. The WWW is one of the significant applications of the internet. It is based on the three core technologies namely hypertext markup language which is HTML, hypertext transfer protocol which is HTTP and web servers and web browsers. The World Wide Web today. Though the two terms internet and WWW are interchangeably used, the web is built on top of the internet and is not the internet itself. All major websites have adjusted their content design and development approach to accommodate the rapidly increasing fraction of the population accessing the web from large screen desktop and laptop computers to small screen tablets and internet phones. Intranet and Extranet Meaning of Extranet For better understanding of how Extranet works, let us break down the word. Extra refers to anything that is crucial to the business that exists outside of it such as clients, vendors and suppliers. An extranet is defined as a private network designed specifically to allow the individuals to communicate with the management and employees in a closed virtual space. Extranets serve an extremely significant role which favors private communication, collaboration, knowledge sharing, document sharing and data transfer between organizations. It is used to meet a variety of different needs ranging from large volumes of data exchanged between parties to brainstorming 
or work back and forth with clients and customers and it can save hours of time in comparison to using email and telephone. Extranets act like built-in quality control that are used to help in monitoring and fixing any potential bugs or issues that can occur with company's products or services. Now let us discuss about the use of Extranet. To share product catalog exclusively with wholesalers, collaborate with other companies on combined development efforts, jointly develop training programs with other companies, to share news of common interest exclusively with partner companies. Now let us see what an intranet is. Intranet is defined as a private secure network designed to facilitate collaboration and make it easier to communicate and share documents in real time. Unlike an extranet, Intranet is typically used internally. Intranets are used in business for a variety of reasons since it helps to streamline day-to-day -day activity, organize people and data, improve internal communication and increase employee engagement. As companies become more and more decentralized, intranets hold more importance in the business landscape. Let us see about the uses of intranet. It provides access to technical documents, to exchange data among co-workers, enables electronic messaging, video conferencing, typing both together with social intranet software. Earlier intranets and extranets were two completely separate entities. At present, intranets and extranets live in harmony as a part of social intranet software. One of the biggest advantage to hit the professional sector. Social intranet software combines the concept of intranets and extranets and rolls them up into a single package overcoming communication and integration issues of different software platforms, with the end result being a one-stop shop, both internal and external processes are carried out in a smooth manner through virtual space where you can address a variety of different business needs. Organizations rely greatly upon intranets and extranets to enable sharing of information communication with employees, suppliers and customers and collaboration on projects. To conclude, we can say that different networks are suitable for different needs and as such, make sure you know your way around the types that you most likely to use. Internet service provider is chosen according to the needs and availability in the specific area. The web is a vast medium which is characterized by ease of entry, relatively low setup cost, globalization, time independence and interactivity. Intranets and extranets are different but once integrated into a business model, these portals can make day-to-day -day activities more efficient, more streamlined, better connected and more productive. This is all for today's lesson. Thank you.